Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, being present in this uh, live session uh, that we are actually um, running today. It's really my, my pleasure to be now in front of uh, different faces that I know, different faces that I appreciate, different faces that I recognize. Um, I would like actually uh, to have in front uh, of me to introduce you, um, Marcos. Marcos is our Brussels office manager. Uh, so uh, he is the person in charge uh, of the front office of the ISPD and ISPD Plus. Um, so our innovation in diplomacy uh, network. Um, it's very nice as well to, to, to have here um, Sidonia that she I always call, she's my uh, personal assistant, however, I always call her my head of cabinet because without her, I'm nobody. Um, and it's very nice to see as well other faces um, from our experts, from our students, uh, from our ex-students. Um, I'm particularly happy to see Marwan. Um, he, I think he's going to kill me because I'm sorry to say like that because I was in Switzerland and I did not call him. So, <laughs> yes, but I may be soon. I would just for this time, um, as much as I want to interact, uh, we, uh, Marcus is already preparing uh, another live session just for our interaction, just to have a little bit of fight with you <laughs> because I love a good fight. Um, but today actually is not, is not about me, it's about um, our businesses, okay? Our business internationally. So I don't want to take long uh, just to congratulate you. Um, I'm really happy to see you. Uh, we had lived a um, complicated uh, year 2020 and 2021 where we all closed and uh, we were in our houses and we were uh, trying to, to become better people. Uh, however, of course, this, um, this um, uh, accommodated as well other skills uh, and other challenges that we all uh, must uh, remain and must um, promise had to promise to ourselves to remain humble. Uh, this, I think, is the lesson of COVID and, and where I would like to start this live session uh, because as we're going to talk about uh, business protocol, uh, the most important skill is to remain humble because sometimes we never know what is behind, behind us and actually with uh, what is uh, the, the problems that arrive when we are in the business protocol setting and the big big differences between protocol and business and how this come together. Um, I'm not going to focus in COVID because COVID is now a part of who we are. So that means that we have to live with any geopolitical or international challenge that the world uh, show to us. So uh, this is part of a constant that maybe we always talk COVID-19 because it was the moment of truth, the moment that we have learned, um, provoked, obliged to run businesses and to run protocol in the business setting in a different way. Meaning that um, we, always, uh, we, always, uh, we are more overwhelmed than before. We have less time to answer. We have less time to, to address the issues and we have less time to uh, manage our own conflicts. Uh, why? Because um, there's something that is changing again or rechanging that is our need of personal interaction. So this is the point. How can we create the opportunities? So that means the opportunities around the world. So in, in my uh, area, I'm, I'm an investor. This is my, my true profession. I'm an economist. Uh, but because I was always an economist since I was graduated and, and grew my profession in different settings, at the end of the day, uh, I believed uh, when uh, I launched a non-profit ISPD um, a long time ago um, with uh, the good things, the bad things, at the end of the day, it's all what we are. Meaning I only had one and solely one purpose. It was that uh, there was an interchange uh, of education where um, as many as people from around the world, they could meet, they could create friends uh, and I know that a lot of, um, I can say, um, 120 students of the SPD, I know as a fact, I'm here in front of my numbers, they have created businesses together. 
they are now cooperating together. So um, at least part of it, um, we were extremely successful in the sense that we have graduates a lot around the world that now run things together because uh, of the interactions that we have done. And actually, when one student or another participant from another region, they could create different offices and to access sometimes supply a new supply chain. So protocol uh, is not only rules and procedures um, as official states protocol, where, uh, as you know, I was as well um, responsible for the European Parliament. Uh, I was head of cabinet of the vice president of the European Parliament, and I was pure protocol, pure institutional protocol for a geopolitical purpose, for a launch and an expansion as well of an international organization. So this is not the setting today. Today, the setting is how protocol can help us and how we can understand others to grow our businesses. Um, this session, uh, we are going uh, to present, I'm going to present as well, uh, why you should belong to our uh, corporate um, membership and as well, everyone that is already studying masters with us or uh, executive diplomas or waiting for, for our sometimes frustrating uh, partner of education in Spain, but uh, of course, um, someone we value. Um, what happens is that we are creating a network that you should never be out of it. So from today on, everyone that belongs to our network and uh, is part of our membership network, you remain. Uh, and the ones that are actually present in this session that would like to register, please, I will explain you why. And the ones that are studying with us, please just ask to Marcos their voucher to continue one year more. Uh, to uh, to become and to continue our member uh, and actually to enter in a corporate membership. This is what I wanted to, to start with. So the purpose is what? Is that we talk about business protocol, we talk about your own businesses, we talk about some sharing I would like to, to run uh, through you about what means business protocol presently, but as well, I would like to, to finalize this session with a conclusion. Let's choose to continue together. This is my conclusion. So like the big poets said always, let's start from the important part. That is the only way that we reach a result. Let's start with the result. The result I want is that we continue together despite of uh, the one year, one year and a half of um, craziness around the world. So let's choose to um, continue together uh, and that we can advance in, in other matters. So um, this is, I'm very happy uh, with that, with that matter. So I'm very happy with your presence here. So please let's um, uh, learn just a little bit about ISPD for the ones that know ISPD. So we, we really uh, did something uh, in, in long time ago in 2008, when I had this idea uh, to create this network and as well parallelly uh, within the network um, uh, Institute of Protocol in Diplomacy um, with the university Camilo Rosesella, where we have as an office inside of the university, uh, so we could deliver official degrees, and we do that with that university. Uh, uh, alone is what we do, we do um, trainings, executive diplomas, projects, but as well we bring people together. So um, at the end of the day, what's, what is the, the present of ISPD is we are just a big network, a big association, like a chamber of commerce with the institute. So what we do in the Institute, we lobby in the different countries. We um, advocate as well uh, the, uh, the pure understanding among cultures and how those cultures can uh, form what I call the, the corporate triangle. That means um, governments uh, that has a state protocol, that is businesses that have their internal business protocol that by nature is only regulated by international standards. And then we have our private um, small offices or big offices or our private um, official uh, interests. So this is actually what we have done. We uh, accommodated the institute with a network and as well with the other companies that belongs to, to our group inside of, um, of the ISPD brand. So this is basically what we have done. Uh, so we have, um, we have our institutes and our network. Uh, that is a non-profit organization, and we support uh, some areas in the cryptocurrency as well, in security, in um, governance in general. We have other skills, and we manage some international 
um, International Chamber of Commerce, as well licenses and franchises up to uh, the business protocol, like pure, that we call an impact. Where actually I am now here today, I'm in, in the Sultanate of Oman, where we have an office, a full-time office. Uh, geopolitically is a very important office for running businesses because Oman does not have enemies. Uh, so, and, um, and they pass from a soft diplomat, uh, like you can see behind me, um, to actually an economical diplomat since um, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos passed away. Um, so the reason I'm here, and I'm not in Dubai, I'm not in Qatar, I'm not uh, in other places, and our office of ISPD is here, even if we have satellites in other places, is because of that reason. It's because here there's a lot of negotiations that are passing through, um, and a lot of uh, neutrality uh, that, uh, that is happening here. It's public that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of uh, Russia was here two weeks ago. Uh, so it's public. Um, so um, in, in the Russian situation, that's unfortunately, uh, we are all living with Russian and Ukraine, and that is affecting immensely the world um, atmosphere in business. After COVID, we had to have a war. <laughs> so we have now a, a hard diplomacy uh, decision. So uh, again, uh, I would like just to reiterate how we can create opportunities in crisis, without crisis. Uh, and I would like just to ask you something. Let's always start our opportunities. Let's always start our conflicts. Let's always start uh, finishing our conflicts soft, with soft diplomacy. This is always how I've learned and grew the business or network is um, there's all these things we don't like, always. There's all these things we are doing wrong, always. That's why we should always maintain ourselves humble with softness and listening for the learning because um, arrogancy and hard diplomacy, I mean, war, um, it's always the last resource and sometimes it's necessary. I'm not saying that is not necessary. However, uh, it ought actually, as the image you, you have in front of you shows, is the network, the interactions, the connections that actually makes us stronger. Uh, in this is a personal uh, sharing. Um, for you to have an idea, as, uh, as you know, um, I lived in many, many countries in the world. In 17, I have implemented projects around the world from Southeast Asia up to Africa, America, North America, Latin America, Europe, now Middle East as well for a couple of years. Um, so at the end of the day, what I've realized is, uh, is the solution of creating the opportunities is just one way, is to find the so-called common ground. I always talk about that, this image, I always put this image since uh, the existence of ISPD. I have three images I'm going to show and repeat some of the topics, but the area that we actually have to focus is about what is maintaining the status quo of the world and how we are growing, because this is changing every day. So that means that theoretically, uh, the premises uh, change, however, the base and the vertebral column of a business protocol professional or someone that needs to support businessmen um, to accomplish their goals is always the same. We have change and at the same time we have vertebral column. So it's always the same. And in front of you, uh, the decision is actually not, is not made um, uh, at the end, is made in the beginning. That's why I said to you already that our decision together is actually to remain together. So our decision was to stay together. It's um, our um, common decision, otherwise you would not be here in this, in this, in this uh, live session um, that, I would, that we were promoting. Uh, so our decision is that. So this is the decision. So now we have to reach that decision and to reach that decision, we have to create a path like a GPS. So the path creation for a final decision is what actually creates um, the result or not, or the success of the business protocol. That's why we call it a protocol because a protocol is not more than rules and procedures. So do we have the same rules and procedures around the world? No. <laughs> No, uh, and that's those rules and procedures are usually set by culture. That's why we start to, to, uh, to the culture as the first step in entering 
a business pro protocol and how we enter a negotiation or how we enter a, a, a will to make business together or an opportunity that we would like to create or seize as well, can be as well. Sometimes we want to seize opportunities and we want to create opportunities or we want to follow opportunities So or take them. Uh, there's different ways of, of, of the path, like I say, like a GPS that we enter on that, on that um, community creation because it's at the end of the day we, what we try to do. So culture, uh, defines by itself a true protocol. Um, there's, uh, but if you, if I ask you a question that says to you, do we have or not we have a predefined culture? My answer to you is, is no. Maybe a long time ago, the cultures were more defined by identities, by nations where we were born. Um, and maybe this until the 20, the beginning of the 21st century was true. There was a lot of nations that brings the culture together. Nowadays, we see multiple cultures, cultures in offices, cultures in corporate um, uh, offices, in companies, in structures, in our mindsets, because we are unique. And this is true as human beings, but as well as structures, as organizations. Again, with our good things and where are bad things, because here we are not talking that everything is good or everything is bad. Usually is never radical. The culture is never radical. Uh, and that's why I always ask, please let maintain us always in the softness until uh, we can, until maximizing that, um, that softness before any radicalism. This is my request actually for the world and I hope to live on that value until I die. So that means constant learning, constant growing, uh, constant um, accepting, listening, and talking. So both ways, all this bilaterally. So cultures can be a business in a in a business setting. Can be, for example, if we all sell gold, if we all sell education, if we all sell oil and gas, if we all sell rice, if we all sell um, sell something, or if you only create services or if you create consultancies. This is corporate cultures that can have different nationalities of people. So first, and is a famous sentence of mine, let's start to understand what is happening before judging. It's very important not to judge without asking uh, because sometimes we don't see the whole picture of the culture. For example, you say, okay, there's, um, we have in front of, of myself, imagine we have three Belgians. Okay, they are the same. No, they are not the same because maybe when Belgium is now seated next to me, to me in Dukom here in the Sultanate of Oman, or there's another Belgium that actually was born in, in Africa. And, and the only thing they have in common is a passport. So that culture cannot define, our passports cannot define who we are. So my passport, uh, I have two passports. You know, I have a Belgian passport and I have a Portuguese passport. So. Okay, I'm, I'm, I was born in the territory of Portugal, even if it is an, an island. So yes, I am Portuguese. However, I have lived in so many places around the world that they, I'm a bit culturized already. So there's parts of me, I'm very Asian in some reactions. Other parts of me, I'm extremely direct. I try to be direct with softness, but I start to, to, to say what I think, uh, to be confronted as well. And so I can reflect on the, the, the reasoning. So this is the first part of a business protocol setting is to understand who's in front of us. Uh, not only nationalities, but the type of, of culture of a company that we're then going to see a little bit after. Because if we don't know first the decision we would like to, so if we decide um, the opposite, and this is very important what I'm now telling you, if you decide, let's see how is going to be the decision, the majority of the times you were not going to get the result you want because you would like to see first. And sometimes you need to believe first. <laughs> it's not about a, 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 a belief in a religious point of view, but when we go to somewhere, we need to have something. And sometimes along the way, that result that initially thought changes, which is very good as well. Um, so the decision, okay, I want something and the business protocol setting mentioned, I would like to establish relationships between Dubai and Berlin in my offices because a colleague of mine is in Dubai. I have another friend of mine that is in Berlin. 
So this is my objective. So if we define, define the objectives before, we take the decision before, it's easier then to be interested in how, how the culture works, how the business protocol is set for that specific organization or country, for example. So this is always the two main pillars. We decide first, we try to understand the culture, and then we see if there's negotiation to be done. And that's why um, um, it's important not to start the way around. Uh, a lot of people say, yes, but can be deductive ways and inductive ways. And I tend to agree uh, in terms of reasoning of raising the negotiations. So we can be more deductive, we can be more inductive. Yeah, it's this is men women talk <laughs> again so we all are different we all have our brains working in a more engineering method or more mathematical method another one more declinative more communicational this is completely normal but this should happen in negotiation not in the culture uh, and not in the decision we should be aware what is our tendency uh, if our tendency is actually to be more fulfilling uh, objective of other people or we are more fulfilling or objective of our own selves and is not actually a critique it's not make us um, not makes us selfish it's just awareness it's important so we can as well continue growing this um is the premises how to set a true protocol the protocol is to know where we are going to know which type of cultures corporately or as well nationally or as well uh, in an encounter uh, that are involved and then we can negotiate the limits not starting the limits not start to say this is how i think this is happening this is not good or this is very good uh, not trying not to exaggerate because there's always a common ground there's always the reasoning always and and maybe we don't agree i don't agree with a lot of reasonings i'm upset sometimes with common grounds i don't want to enter uh, however um, it's important to have the the humbleness in business to uh, at least understand that may be a cultural reasoning. And that's why we establish a business protocol of our own culture, of corporates, so we can share with others uh, how we reason. Because if people don't understand, um, it's more difficult. And the majority of the people don't understand the reasoning of others. It's normal as well. So does not make us dumb or makes us limited. On the contrary, this is something that makes us smart to even admit okay this is something i still need to learn um on this slide and the last notes i would like to share uh one point um the ones that are very attentive and are in a setting they can um they can guess and this is something that needs to be trained i always say is the protocol i that is extremely important in everything but in business protocols, especially, I'm going to tell you an example. Um, you know, I, I, I'm shareholder with, a, with another company that we are setting um, uh, setting uh, an office in, in in Switzerland, and so we had um, a group of lawyers and, and people that are doing that for us. And I was in a Zoom meeting, uh, and the people were explaining how we're going to do, and um, and all my colleagues saying, "Oh, you know, because the Swiss people are very organized, the Swiss people are very um, motorized." And you know what I've done? I asked to those people, from which part of Rotterdam are you from? As you know, Rotterdam is not in Switzerland. And the people uh, start laughing and say, but how do you know we are Dutch? What I mean about that you know, means that in a conversation, I did not know who was going to be in front of me, but because of body language, of accent, of company name in Switzerland, so I did not have any external details to understand where they were from, but I understood in the mapping, body language, type of conversation, accents, names, all together where they were from. So I did not that, for example, to show, oh, I guess they were from Netherlands, I just wanted to pass a point in my negotiation, please. <laughs> It's very good to have Dutch in Switzerland to support us to set up the business, but just let, I would like to acknowledge that I know you're not from Switzerland. So I'd like to know why you are in Switzerland. So this is how we put our limits. We start to see, okay, am I willing to work um, with foreigner in, in another country? Of course, 
every one of us. He's the most amazing thing in life. He's the expat culture. He's the immigration culture because it's like that that we really create a negotiation and understanding. But it's interesting. We call it perception. So it's to perceive the truth uh, within a correct perception of market. Okay. Uh, maybe not easy to digest what I just said, but uh, we cannot decline from a culture point of view, okay? You cannot decline who is in front of, of us. So the reason of Ines, um, that moment was not Switzerland anymore, was like the team that I was going to work with. So not anymore about a nation, not anymore about a setting. It was something that was linked to the decision, to the result, no longer to the negotiation, because I already set the standard. I know your culture, even if you are uh, in another country is not yours. Uh, however, the culturally approach for the business protocol changed, okay? So, uh, so even the openness on, on, on that matter. And it's very important that we can guess, it's just an example uh, that is real, uh, of what means protocol I, is to see what others don't. So everyone that, uh, that was my student in the past or that passed in my hands somehow, um, uh, they, they know I'm, um, I'm difficult in that moment. Uh, in the protocol, I am very difficult. Uh, I, I can be um, a little bit um, uh, critique. Um, however, I believe that um, we should accept and give and request and, and give. It's not only one way, not never, not only one way. From, from the moment it's only one way, uh, the unilateralism starts. Unilateralism, there's not a creation of opportunities around the world. When is unilateralism? So this, like I said, there's no teams. It's better that someone does something alone, they create their own things alone, and they go around, create opportunities alone. So we have to choose personality-wise, market-wise, what, how we establish our own business protocol that can be adapted to an international standard like I said about COVID, that changed a lot the standards. So, it has in 2022. This uh, this is a model I have created for the ones that that read my book of soft diplomacy and the, the corporate diplomacy one. Um, it, this is a theory, okay, and this is very valid still, and that's why I wanted you just to look at it. So, because there's some uh, within the premises of the same model that is still valid. What changed now for for 22? This is a pure protocol. This is a business protocol that is the so-called international standard that is not changing. <laughs> if you see, we still have an organization. If we are in business, we still have clients. We still have competitors and now more than ever, we still have suppliers from different uh, ge geographies. We still have staff. Uh, we still have partners more than before, actually. So with the COVID, we needed to partner more. Um, and we still have uh, our shareholders or I still need to report to any central bank or any government or any tax authority. And you still have um, a board of directors. This is still valid. And with that, the structure uh, of the business protocol itself, we still have other companies, other countries, other nationalities. So the model is still valid of the international business model. So that means from inside to outside. However, what really changed is uh, the, the part that is you, you can see around and the last uh, circle where you have companies, countries and nationalities is been changing geopolitically. So what I wanted to, to request for from you today, um, a little bit of openness because the bridge between geopolitics and business results and opportunities was always extremely strong. You don't, we don't know geopolitics, you don't know to manage businesses, okay? So business protocol is just not the rules and procedures. How is the organigram of my company? No, a business protocol is not that. Business protocol is how the organigram of my organization fits with the other organigrams of organizations that have as well the freedom of choice, but how we connect. So how we connect uh, again, it's always about the same words I'm repeating. That is about the common ground, the common ground, the common ground, the common ground, the common ground. So this is um, a bit difficult to, to regulate it. 
uh, because um, we don't live alone. And, and from my own experience um, in, in different trades and different things that I'm involved, I never get what I want. <laughs> for me, uh, if I get what I wanted, I would have actually the model working perfectly. I, my deadlines are correct, my timelines are correct, um, everything is perfect. But because we have to accept the external changes, or geopolitically, or, uh, or internationally, or new rules and procedures, or new taxations, or new international organizations, uh, that we don't have as an organization visibility, usually, uh, as humans, we struggle always with what we don't see. And I'm one of them. I'm not here, I'm not trying to pay, play the saint because I'm not at all. I always struggle with the same points because at the end of the day, business people, they like the results are the ones they have planned. This is another parallelism. And I saw my friend Lucena out there um, put the picture, which is very good to see some people with picture. Um, is actually uh, how we balance the plan. We have organizations that decide, okay, I go wild, meaning I don't plan, I don't care. I'll do my trade, I'll do my work, I'll do my consultancies, I'll do my services. I will do my, my own business model freely. I don't care to plan, which in the long run as well is not sustainable, even now in the markets now that are ex extremely volatile, um, but will not work out as well to give up completely in a pure protocol. <laughs> yes, I, I will be the one that I would advise do not do that. Okay. Then we have as well the so-called more classic structures uh, yes, I am already 45, so I come more from that more classic uh, structures. That means, no, there is, uh, there is an operational SOP, there is a regulation that we have to follow, uh, that is um, uh, a pillar of planning that is essential and unique. Uh, myself, I believe on that. However, if you are too rigid, we are not fast enough to change and to adapt to the situations we cannot control. We have now this, you know, with the situation of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, maybe it was the biggest challenge of my life uh, currently. Um, maybe I have lived other moments, uh, Iraq war when I was still in the European Parliament and I had to leave, I had to be a white woman and blonde woman in, in, in East Timor, I had to fight as well in Southeast Asia. I mean, we all have to, to leave those, and each of us is a story. Today is my story, maybe tomorrow is your story. Um, so we all have to leave those stories, how we adapt to the change. And there's something that's uh, really changed with the times is that our change, change needs to be super fast in adaptation. So, and it's not easy to accept uh, the classic structural area. That means the protective part, the planning that to try and not to, to, to communicate too much because it's planned, we don't need, there's a plan. And then the super flexible structure that everyone is communicating nonstop and as well creates noise. Both structures uh, create a lot of noise in the 2022 because we cannot plan anymore as we wish, as in a classic mental organization, but we cannot be as well a completely chaotic um, because that would not match in the whole world. So look, again, we have to, to manage those stakeholders that are in this map um, very carefully, you know, with, with, with the white gloves, uh, because we don't, um, we don't have, there's genius people in the world, huh? so they may have the visibility, but the normal people like us, uh, like myself, um, we, we cannot, see the whole picture constantly. I try, believe me. I'm constantly trying how the geopolitics is happening. I'm always trying to learn something new, how the shareholders are reacting, if they're happy and happy. The regulators as well, if there's the partners, if uh, how the change of imagine a client affects a, a partner, how the competitors are actually affecting the other business if my supplier is not give me what I want to uh, supply to my client. So this, this is always a constant game, it's like a dance. Actually, it's a, a, a dance that we have always to, to be attentive and to have multiple eyes 
And, and that's why I always suggest something. If you can, work with teams, if you can. Um, because uh, if you have the possibility to, to be uh, surrounded with a good partner, surrounded with a good staff member and people that trust you, that you trust, um, your eyes multiply. And so you take advantage not of those people because it's not to take advantage of anyone, it's actually to share um, the responsibility and to share as well um, uh, the path that you would like to reach the final decision making and the result that we want. The people that usually lose the patience around the, the way, uh, and it will happen all, because we're all humans um, as professionals, uh, or that ones that I only work with my business protocol, what usually happens is they will lose. And unfortunately, there is a lot of corporate cultures out there that uh, they lose because of patience. Um, and this is the markets because uh, the, it's very difficult, uh, the, the balance between the fast change needs to be immediately and the patience to actually grab the plan with uh, the result we want. So it's, it's, a, it's a bridging that happens and that's why the, the so-called business protocol is putting into question. And when, when uh, Marcus, uh, that we work together and we fight all the time, uh, decided for this name, I accepted it, of course. Uh, it's part of um, the long history of, of ISPD. However, I'm always more pro corporate diplomacy. I'm always more pro um, um, than the protocol in business. Uh, even if, as you know, I, I've done so many protocols in my life, uh, because those protocols are in constant change, in constant change. Uh, and you can ask me, okay, but how can we follow something that works for, for the world, for creating those opportunities? Um, to do something a bit different than others. This is the solution. Because international standards, they exist. So we don't rob, we pass our invoices, we pay our taxes, we manage our tax. There's, this map in front of you, is still valid. This is a business protocol. However, for us to be able to negotiate, to grow, to, to continue um, uh, expand and actually have more friends, more partners, more suppliers, more clients, more team, we need to do uh, things a little bit different. Um, it's, it's, it's the only solution now. So um, I think secret of success, three points to resume. Maintain your plan maintain your structure, maintain yourself organized, maintain your international standards, follow the rules if you can, yes. However, learn fast, extremely fast, as fast as you can. Adapt to the change as fast as your capacity is. Be extremely flexible, maintaining the international standards, maintaining your vertebral column intact as a perfection. Because, you know, like I said, even when you dance, the vertebral column is still staying with you. So you go around, imagine dancing, dancing, dancing. I'm sorry for the example, but I think it's a good one. Um, your, your column, vertebral column is going with you. And as straight as you are, better you are as dancer. And you are extremely flexible. So this is how the, the moment is happening. And then last and not least, do something different. If the dance is, I don't know, it's just to go in front and turn right, and you, you have the freedom to, to do so, jump in the middle when you don't have to jump. And I'll offer, offer a gift to someone that you love in the middle of no expectation or do, um, do something that speak their language, uh, learn something new because you have to be yourself. Otherwise there's no sustainable business if you are a lead of that company. And as better as you are in business protocol, and to know everything about other cultures, there's nothing to be the one that adapts to other. Yes, should be essential. However, maintaining your vertebral column. So do not communicate too much, do not communicate too less. Don't create noise, no need. Nowadays, there's too much noise uh, because the external world already confused us. It's normal because it's how the, the geopolitics and politics and business, international business operate. Um, the noise is there. So uh, sometimes we follow the media, we follow what my friend said, what other friends said, without actually going again to the center of our organization. Okay, 
we, we have all these companies, these countries, nationalities, these external world, all this noise. This is a fact. Does it affect me or not? Okay, the majority of the time is yes, because now we are a one world. It's, if you connect, it's like uh, oceans do not exist anymore. We are all connected, like a ball. So how can I do to affect, if it is positive, to affect me the maximum positive way possible? And if it's negative, how can I, you know, um, diminish the negative impact of something that will impact me? So it's always to try to, to question ourselves. Uh, is the only way to, to, to try to do better. And today I'm going to do bad something for sure. Today I'm going to make a mistake. I hope <laughs> that means I keep the learning. Um, and, and this is a bit of the science of, of, of the business and the growth is to maintain ourselves um, with integrity to ourselves, of course, but as well to, um, to adapt and to the, the areas that we cannot change. Sometimes we complain, my, this should not be like this. this of course, we know, um, should never be uh, in a negative way to impact us. Because again, I'm not saying we are selfish, but we are in the center. We are in the organization. So we are in the center. We always think about our center, which is completely normal. And I don't feel that is, for example, that if I feel about my center does not mean that I'm being selfish. No, it's the way to be. We have to feel the center so we can as well reflect on the decentralized stakeholders. Uh, this is a, is a point that changed immensely from the structured classic organization to what uh, is happening now today in the world. So what is the global factor? What changed? Uh, what is the new matrix? How, how, how we can be faster and growing and at well planning? This is the matrix. So everyone comes from different places in the world. I, today, uh, in this time, I'm working for, in, in terms of partners, I'm going to tell them, I'm working with Omanis, Austrians, um, Portuguese, that actually I have a very different culture from them, which is very strange, even if my passport is from there as well, uh, with Swiss, with Norwegian, with Swedish, with Americans, with Latin Americans, with Indians, with Chinese, Chinese Singaporeans, with Indian Singaporeans, with Malays, uh, with two Australians. Um, so it is constant. So I'm always having to adapt to two things. One, um, to not stereotype them for all this, because I'm going to say a joke about uh, the Australians against, for example, the New Zealanders. <laughs> and so I always have to be self-conscious, not to be stereotyping. Uh, and another one is always I always have to be awake in the morning, in the night, in the middle of the night. So uh, sleep deprived. <laughs> so that means is that, um, and sometimes we just live with all these multiple people um, uh, in, in, in a country only. So, so that happens is that when we're all together, we, we are tired, we are uh, overworked. We, so it's uh, the, the, the point to the bigger danger to say and, and do the wrong thing augments. And the majority of the times in international business now is that we say things wrong in a wrong way because of our overworked or because of our tiredness or because of our stress, not because we really think that. The majority of the times is a pure mistake, is a pure perception, is a pure um, uh, combination of settings uh, that are not aligned uh, with, uh, with how we are. So it's very important. And that, that's why I always try. Sometimes, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm upset as well. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really upset because I'm very direct. Uh, however, I try not to judge. It's, it's, maybe it's the solution for this whiteboard here. Um, I, I try really not to judge because uh, sometimes we don't know the settings. Uh, the only thing I can, for example, state the fact. Okay, the fact is this one. There's any reason behind that fact. Um, and, and I believe that not by not judging, I am creating as well new opportunities around the world because there's a feeling from the other side and the word is correct, the verb is the feeling because there's not the proof out of it that there's a trust feeling because when we don't judge and we ask questions, um, uh, what happens is that usually we get the right answers. The answers actually we are looking for, and sometimes we get answers we don't want, but at least we get a little bit of the truth. Uh, you can say yes, but not everyone is good in the world. Not everyone is transparent. 
I agree. That's why we have another problem, another global factor that is our augmentations of the external stakeholders that creates a lot of noise as well. And it's, uh, we need to be a little bit conscient to understand um, which direction we would like to follow because uh, sometimes we cannot go all, to all directions at the same time. Uh, and, and then passes to the, the gray zone here that is the constant growth of international interactions uh, that is uh, linked to the augmentations of the stakeholders because interactions does not mean stakeholders. If we are courageous, for example, myself, I believe I am. <laughs> Actually, maybe it's my, my only talent. And my only talent is I, I'm a courageous person. So um, I don't say no to the learning. So meaning that, meaning that I have to be non-right a lot of times. Uh, so the ego has to be reduced. For example, I work with a colleague of mine that I adore, but he has a big ego. He can never be wrong. So sometimes, and I see it, but I understand because there's egos that we need is to protect the planning. So that usually the egos protects the planning and protects the, the, the fear of the mistake. I think this is more linked to fear. The fear of the mistake, the fear of the judgment, the fear of to be expelled out of the global matrix. In my case, as, as Ines now, because uh, as well, I'm a person. <laughs> Um, I try not to be fear of the expulsion of the bad news. Uh, I try to integrate, um, to tell the truth as much as I can, to try to find a balance of a communication. Uh, it means between the, the truth can be told in different ways. So I can say, I don't want to talk to you. This is very aggressive. And I can say, I'm not really happy in the way that lately we are communicating. It's the same. Honestly, uh, I don't want to talk with that person. Imagine if I, but don't, I don't need to offend anyone. Uh, I don't need to, to, to cut uh, anyone out of, of my stakeholder, my external stakeholders, just because I've taken a decision. We, we can take, but as well, we have to be able to take our own responsibility for our own decision-making. It's very important because, um, because of this growth of international interactions, what happens, we have a tendency as well to put the blame where it should not be done. So uh, to take a responsibility to something that we don't control is honesty, is a good practice in international business, is a good protocol because we will never be able to control. This is the truth as well. We are going to try to do the best to control to the plan or to or to a growth of a company or to the expansion, special expansions um, takes uh, takes a huge amount of effort from 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 our teams and ourselves as leaders or as as our business protocol facilitators or or people that organize uh, etiquette setting or uh, even a table of a restaurant. Um, so we have to try. We can adapt as much as we can because I believe. No, it's, it's a bit like this old story that we say, let's choose our battles. You know, sometimes if someone says, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't want to put the suit because now it's too hot in Oman, it is. But sh shall I push for this? I don't want to wear a suit. I'm going to go for non-suits. It's not my way. I don't want, do I want to have that battle or not? So this is an advice by experience. If you try to choose your good battles, uh, you have the success of winning, and this is not, I say it, I just try to live it, you know, uh, it's not about words, um, what I'm saying, I try to live it, again, I make a lot of mistakes, this is part of the matrix, it's part of the courage to go out there, to go, uh, to, go to a global factor, to go to around the world, create opportunities, you are going to make mistakes, every single day, because you want to work with an African, because you want to work with the Indian, because we have to work with the Chinese, <laughs> mandatory. <laughs> um, so, so, so let's not to try to run away from the mistakes, but actually to be faster to recover from them. Again, it's about always the balance of the planning and the fastness, the change and the fastness, and the, and, um, and the, and the constructivism and sustainability. It's always the same premises. And it's not easy because our brains have to be faster as well. In the adaptation itself, we can, and, 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 and then it's based on personality. And this, we cannot change the personality. 
um, the ones that like to learn, for example, like I consider myself one of, of those people. Um, sometimes I, I, I can be a better professional than other ones that do not like to learn. Not because it's Ines, but because I take the courage to make that mistake and to, and to confront and to face uh, the unknown. Because uh, you, the definition of a courage in business to go out there, to pick up new opportunities, you need to face the unknown. You can study. You can study. Non-stop, you're still going to face unknown. You're going to face unpredictability. You're going actually to be dependent on things that you yourself do not control. Otherwise, we don't go for that global uh, business protocol. We're not going to create new opportunities. We stay at home. We arrive every day. We have our job. We sit. We eat. We have the prediction. And I don't say that not all personalities should go out there. Actually, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the believer, actually, that I think is the right word as well, that everyone can do whatever they want and what they wish for. We should not limit it ourselves, but for doing everything we want, you must have a huge, huge courage because you're going to be facing not only the others, you're going to face yourself every day. You're going to face yourself every day. And this is the, um, uh, the part that, that you see where you are in your professional stage of development. Because when you face yourself and the fault is always the others, don't go out there yet. Try to learn more. When you go outside and you know, I'm going to do my best. I'm going just to manage it. What I cannot control, but I'm growing, continuing, not stopping your path. You are in the stage of courage. And again, you're going to have little accidents, little mistakes, but we, you don't cease to create new opportunities. And that's why we always talk about ISPD. And uh, honestly, we, uh, we created this Chamber of Commerce because of that. Because the people that are members with us, you know what happened? They are already aware of the courage. They already want to be there. They already want to face it. They already want to learn. They already want to expose themselves. And that's why I don't say, oh, let's uh, become together in the Chamber of Commerce of India, Belgium, or um, you know, Sweden, Lisbon, Portugal, or you know, uh, Oman, uh, New York, or Oman, US. I'm not, uh, bilateralism is important, extremely. However, we, what to try, what we are doing the last uh, 12 years, and that's why I'm, I'm sharing this with you, uh, we create topics. But we interchange as well. We, we learn, we put uh, experts, we have programs, we have a lot of things. But mainly we belong to a community that believes in the same values that is to create opportunities to each other. So basically what I do is just that, is to bring as many community I can in our corporate membership. So we have a lot of people and we try only to, to work within the community. Uh, and sometimes we work outside of the community as well. However, everyone that is our corporate member or because they are our students and they are in our masters and they automatically, after finishing the masters, they become a corporate member or because they are already a business partner, they become a corporate member or because they're a corporate member and because of business partner. What actually we do is to um, do a, a small due diligence among us. So we are not alone anymore. And this is really true. Uh, we create people with the same mindsets, with the same courage, and the success of the business that we create together, the percentage of success is higher. Uh, because again, when you were there fighting alone, um, it is what it is, you know, we just go out there to the jungle and sometimes among us is a type of courage, but we, don't, we are not alone because we, there's always someone, if we ask here in this group uh, of our members, uh, that's someone that speaks um, Portuguese, for sure, there's someone here. Someone that speaks uh, Africans, yes, for sure, someone here. Someone that speaks uh, Hindu, yes, for sure, someone is here. Chinese, for sure. So there's always someone that can even assist us. I, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. And sometimes I do some, some trades and I need some help. You know, I, I just say, colleague of mine, I cannot take all this. Imagine is the cake is too big I, because I don't speak this language or I don't have the time. So I say, okay, I give you a little bit of my deal, but please help me. I do this very often, actually. 
it's fine because I just want to share. I just would like, I just like to work together because someone to support me and I have to give something back. Meaning, okay, I can be a, give a fee from my business or I can give something else. And I think this is um, the parallelism of the past of chambers of commerce and what actually will have built all of us together is actually um, that development that there's a due diligence already done inside this business protocol that sometimes we don't have to pass anymore. You know, the other day I was, uh, I was talking now with a colleague of mine for work, Daniel, and um, another colleague of mine um, said, oh, I saw a picture in the Instagram with you and Daniel. And I said, okay, he's my friend. So suddenly they were uh, among the, the membership and our network, but I never met uh, in the same spectrum. We are never together because of these uh, international Zoom meetings that happening in the last two years, but they are friends. So, so of course, if the, one, the majority of the people are here, they are already registered with us. So because they are, like I said, students or they were uh, members or they are business partners, they already have the, the benefits to belong to us, the ones that do not and would like actually to, to launch a marketing their own businesses, their own services. It's the moment that you could enroll with, with us. We work uh, like a normal chamber of commerce annually. So you can participate on all these events that you are here, sometimes by invitation, sometimes we have the um, official education online um, that is open for everyone that, uh, that is, is part of our, of our membership. We have as well, uh, all types of interactions of marketing. For example, if you have a new product that you want to launch or, or, or a book, remember I wrote this book for so we launch in the network. So why not, if you write the book, why you don't launch it to so everyone reads around the world? We have more than 100 countries that are connected. That's our membership reach there and reach prime ministers, ministers, all types of people, businesses, sub businesses, small, big, the parts of communication, marketing uh, around the world, even the impact. Um, under Marcus, uh, the Brussels office manager, uh, leadership, he tries to, to target and to actually see how the impact is in different areas. Um, like I said, we are not perfect at all. We are just um, a, a good network where we can filter. I think this is maybe the, the right way of filter. So, uh, so we can as well, again, use our own network to create more businesses, to bring more people in the, the community. Because one day, you know, we are setting up businesses together. This is, believe me, I am now shareholder of three businesses that they were members of my of ISPD first, of students of ISPD. Like I said to you, there's 120 students of ISPD for 2010 up to 2019 that created businesses together. I mean, this is, for me, it's fascinating. This gives me joy. And again, uh, the joy of, uh, of, uh, of bringing the people together because at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, something, something that is, uh, uh, is valuable for, for all of us. So, so that's it, for example, for you to know um, what the people that, sorry, not the people are here, they, they, they pay or they are because we did businesses together or because we, we run an international representation office that um, if we, for example, we have that as a business, uh, it's, it's the charge we, we take. Um, it's 1,560, you know, we have the global network. We have all the opportunities of clientele. For example, now I have a, one of our um, current members or new member. He, he has gold to sell. I won't <laughs> because I like to sell gold. So uh, please come, please come. So I can do a proper due diligence. I could enter immediately. So yes, so it's uh, for example, and, do, and we do uh, as well a lot of um, corporate social responsibility programs as well to support, you know, um, people that cannot have uh, or don't have money or do not have education. Uh, for example, I have a son that I have adopted. Um, that now he's already in university when I was young, uh, working in East Timor. He did not have the money. He was selling cigarettes. Uh, honestly, this is a true story. And he now, uh, a policeman said to that, uh, my son uh, on, the, on the street said, you're never going to be anyone. I did not like. How can you say that to a young boy that is growing up? Cannot say you're not going to become anyone. Of course, you're going to become someone. <laughs> cannot be said that. And then I actually almost punched in the face that policeman, honestly. Uh, and then I said, while I live, he's going to be someone. This boy, for you to have an idea, now he studies in Indonesia <laughs> and he's going to become a doctor. True story. 
So I mean, this this boy is is someone uh, because we create those uh, programs of uh, social responsibility or in Iraq or children, mainly in the education and cross cultural education because it's what I believe that are the tools and uh, all the, the the tools that we need to to expand and to have the access to that opportunities. Um, uh, around the world, because I believe as many languages you speak and as many or capacity of internationalization of that courage, more opportunities you are as well raising for yourselves, if you have the self awareness. So, um, and then we have, of course, some, a lot of executive diplomas and so on, and access to all online events, anything you need, for example, that for example, if you are already member and you are not receiving something, please. Uh, it's as well important to address uh, something negative. I don't have any problem. Please just address directly to Marcos and say, I'm not receiving what I should be receiving. Please give me a hand. Or, or if there's any problem, it's because there's a certain way uh, to solve it. Please, please contact us uh, to Marcos, um, that he's here, the front office, uh, or Brussels at ispd.org, so he can address the problems. Uh, like, Marcus is like the, the Brussels is the problems, the front office is the non problem. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yes, and then you have access to all live sessions we have with different experts and so on. So, um, so actually, to join us annually, we have these 5,900 euros that, uh, that is the same price of our com combination of executive diplomas. So, we try to do something that is fair for the ones that pay, for example, for education, they at least have the rights of membership, and the ones that already have masters and have uh, executive diplomas and have all of that at least they can um as well match to to the growth of their in, of their businesses so so anything you need and the ones that like i, I, I repeat that you are not receiving something that you have right <laughs> please please contact us um I'm, I'm i'm attentive to to that um and um and as well uh, marcus can can follow up on on that so please and just be part of, of our community. So uh, I really like this invitation. Um, we are uh, we have big plans for 22. So uh, for you to have an idea, we are uh, together with other companies where I'm shareholder, we are building um, uh, not only the community because the community is always uh, here and growing. We are building um, a community that would like to make an impact. So that impact as well, your ideas, we have the ideas box uh, is as well welcome in, in a way that uh, if there's a CSR program that you believe that we should support the community, imagine in your home, um, uh, imagine in Mozambique, or if there's a community that you, you believe that uh, in education, that through the corporate memberships, we can as well launch a community or um, as well, like I said, a license in, in uh, Maldives, or, or if there's in Sri Lanka community, and uh, that needs to be developing a, a program for um, for um, uh, students of international relations, for example, or business people. Please just contact us because we are really open um, in in building things together. We enhance as well your own businesses because, like I said, ours we we just work out there. What is the interest of ISPD is actually to grow to grow you uh, to to really grow. Um, uh, a constructivism approach. Uh, otherwise, there's no, there's no capacity for, for, for growth. So today, I'm sorry to be a monologue. Um, what I asked um, uh, Marcus is that he can take the official questions of, of education session. Um, if they have any, any problems, please contact directly the front office or Brussels or directly uh, Marcus. He's here because he's going to follow up of everyone that is in this session. Um, this is a session of, uh, of uh, launching, of, of, uh, of, uh, of um, reactivation of the community. It's a session of bringing the, the, the old people, the members that are always here with us together to new ones. And it's as well a session to, to say that uh, we all pass together the COVID. We all pass together. Now we pass together geopolitics with Russia. For sure, you are having challenges everyone is having. Um, and I just would like to know that you are really not alone. Um, and I really would like uh, that you can count on ISPD as well for, for your growth and as well um, uh, for your expansion. And please, last note. <laughs> 
what I would like to let you know is please uh, maintain your courage. This is the only thing that we make you a continuous good person, open to learning and to the challenges of change. Uh, like said, the scorpions, the wind of change. So thank you so much for your assistance. I'm sorry to take a little bit longer than I have promised, but I was so excited to, to be here. Um, so any, everything else can wait because today I'm 100% focused with you. Thank you so much. And, um, and I hope to see you very soon in our network. Contact Marcus in everything that is good. Contact our Marcus, then, then he will separate the subjects to, to the right people in our team. If there are any challenge you're leaving, please contact Marcus. He's be able as well to, to, um, uh, to address the issue. Uh, and if you would like to continue to be part of our network, please as well uh, do so. Um, and we, we count on you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ness. Um, thank you for this great lecture. And uh, first of all, as an ISPD's Brussels office manager, I would like to welcome each one of your all of our guests today. We are very happy with your presence presence here. Now we are going to have a brief uh, Q and A uh, with Dr. Pires. There are a few questions that uh, were sent by you, our guests. Uh, I will read some of them uh, one by one, and then you can please reply, Dr. Dr. Pires. Uh, first question. In your opinion, can the business protocol help expand trade globally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, you can say all, I'll try then to, uh, to, okay. to answer okay. everything. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the second one is in phase of war, and the health crisis. Mm -hmm. Do you think that companies that walk together uh, are more likely to survive or stand out? Um, the third one is uh, in a discussion with my board, uh, what arguments could I have to convince them to be part of the network of ISPD? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, and it's enough. It's enough for now. So I okay, think three, okay. three, three is fine, because um, the the middle question, uh, that means uh, the the survival, is a very good question. I, I, we'll answer the first question and and the last. Um, this for the groups of three questions. Um, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Um, do we want to survive companies, or we want to grow them? This is the first question I want to address to that, to that question. If we would like to survive, alone is easier. Alone is better uh, to survive, okay? Uh, because we, when we walk alone, we don't have so much burden to carry. That's why I always link courage with, with growth, really, because to grow, we need courage. So um, if we want to survive, it's, it's easier alone to, to have a, a survival mode. If you want to grow, if you have a huge amount of crisis, like you said, in wars, in health, it's better really to, um, to accommodate others into our setting. If you are the richest one and you cannot, for example, access to a specific supply, a supply chain, if you continue your relationships and your partnerships, you have a, a possibility of survival that is higher. Yes, but for growth, for sure. Uh, if you are in a survival mode in the sense, okay, I will reduce the capacity, I will uh, fire employees, I will um, not expand, not to do uh, payments, for example, for non-necessary areas. Um, there's a, it's, it's a so-called retractive way of survival. And this is not wrong. When I say the word survival, it is not wrong. There's moments we need to survive so we can grow. It is like the, um, uh, the snails, you know, the snails, how the snails walk. Sometimes snails, they go a step back to go up, a step back to go up. It's fine because you are still growing. When you are protective, you are still growing. What I believe is that um, depends on the size of your business. The size uh, depends on the um, location of your business. Depends as well with the type of partnerships that we have formed. So to answer that, yes, um, to survive, 
don't have too many partners if you cannot afford to manage them. This is important. If uh, you would like to expand and grow and you have um, the resource or the muscle that, that you can still grow uh, while a, a retractive period of, of the economy is better to, yes, to partner wide because there will be opportunities that you're not going to see alone. Because sometimes when you are in a very specific area of business and we are, don't have the fastness that I was saying before to open, um, uh, we, we, actually, um, we actually retract ourselves, so we, we stop. Sometimes we even die. And we have to be so fast in that, in that growth that uh, the partnership is essential. So my opinion is in moments of crisis, look for the opportunities. Do not look for the retraction. You can retract a bit. And it's something interesting that, that I've learned in the COVID myself as a, as a business professional. I've learned something I did not know before. Uh, for for an, one idea, uh, usually it's always like that as an economical speaking. We always expand when the economy is good and we risk and let's go conquer the world. And when it's crisis, we always retract because of the fear. Something I have learned in the COVID is to protect and risk, protect and risk, protect and risk. Meaning I don't protect all because it's not possible because if I protect all, I will die. I will die of, uh, of being too much time in the water. You know what I mean? Uh, but if I risk too much, then I could as well lose the, um, the eyes on the shore. So you have all this to protect a bit where you are, but all this risk, all this expand, all this expand is the only way to maintain um, a health uh, in, in your businesses. This is my true uh, business opinion. Uh, in regards to the, the answers first and second question, in regards to the network, how you convince your board is, is fine. You, you present them uh, what Marcus is going to send to all of you after. And you say, we would like to build a community that can help us to expand. And depending on what is your board, uh, what is a uh, personality, if you are more retractive, more expansive, and, uh, and, um, and uh, the, the, the value is there, uh, you know, you, the value for money is there in the list. And, um, and I believe that we are at least constantly provoking some learning uh, and provoking some, some courage thoughts. And I believe this is already enough because it's provocative for our own expansion. Uh, it's like a big team that you don't have to, to really pay for because when you pay a membership and we have access to all of us together to think for a problem. For example, we have one member that sent me a huge problem and I could not solve it myself or any of our 100 experts around. So what we said, we sent to the community. How we would solve this? The person receives a full report that actually Deloitte would charge you 35,000 euros. <laughs> so uh, that's, I think it's, uh, it's, the, um, it's the value at the end of the day. So uh, Marcus, three more, three more. <laughs> perfect, perfect, very good. Uh, Anna is asking, when it will be possible to visit face-to-face -face sessions. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your sessions today. Mm -hmm. You have more? Or the, uh, one more. Uh, one more so can join this. this. As, as an individual, is there any advantage if I nominate some companies to be part of the ISPD network? Mm -hmm. um, okay, for the face-to-face -face sessions, Anna, this, <laughs> You know so how many questions people ask me about it. Um, for me, I was, I was doing it now. The issue is not that. Uh, there's, there's two problems. One, um, the people do not have money anymore even for flights, <laughs> really. Uh, there was a huge crisis in the COVID. So what is happening is that we did, uh, we ran statistically uh, questions to our participants and members to say, do you like a face-to-face -face or Zoom? The people say, uh, Ines, incorrect question, they ask. It's not what we want, yeah? Uh, we prefer that you run uh, anything that's, that's because face-to-face -face we cannot now go in a hotel to go to Brussels or to go to Lisbon or to go to Oman or to go to other places, but it's a cost of the flight, it's plus this and plus that. So the majority of the people currently, currently they are in a retractive mode, meaning, so that's why we believe that in a membership in this setting is cheaper for the companies than to sending people to out there for now. Does not mean that the markets will not change soon, sooner than later, we hope, but we still uh, economically speaking in a retractive moment. 
So when I launch those questions, the majority of the people, they say, I want face-to-face. -face. I want face-to-face, -face. I want face-to-face, -face. but I cannot have face-to-face. -face. So we are following that statistical currently. So like I said, for me, I want face-to-face, -face, uh, but now the answers from, our, from all our corporate members, we, what we have agreed on together, and uh, community, is that this year, end of this year, we're going to do a big innovation in diplomacy summit, okay? Uh, so we are soon we're going to launch the date, uh, 2022, that we believe is going to be the launch of the face-to-face -face sessions for, forever. Yeah, and we want to do that in a, in, a, in, a, in a winter time. I'm sorry to be so geopolitically, but we want to know how the change between the current status quo is going to happen when the summer finishes. Uh, because summertime, everyone, um, they are happy. And now I believe this summer, what everyone should do is to enjoy their families. I'm not kidding, because it was too long, closeness, uh, not seeing friends. So this summer, people should go and enjoy the families, the ones that are separated for two years. I know so many of, of, of my clients and, and partners and suppliers and corporate members that they don't see their families for two or three years. I'm already traveling a lot, but um, it's not so, it's starting. So we believe that, um, that from September on, from the, uh, the, the Optum area between uh, September and December, we start the face-to-face -face sessions again with um, a general summit uh, that we are going to, to run at the end of the year, actually in Madrid. So when, uh, when we have finalized that, that final planning, it's going to be actually in the next two weeks because we have some delays from the university that I'm not very happy about, but I'm, I'm, I'm finalizing them with them. So um, as soon as we, we have these official dates, we're going to launch for the community. And I believe can be already a very good face-to-face -face session that we, we can uh, see each other, all of us. And, uh, and to launch as well a new era again of face-to-face, uh, of, um, of, -face, of encounters, okay? So for the individuals, uh, yes, always. Um, send us an email for that because each, each person has a different story. Uh, send us a, a, an email to Marcos. Yes, we have. Uh, for example, um, a lot of people, uh, students of ours or members of ours, they lost um, th their jobs. Uh, this is the truth as well. I, I, you know, I'm very blunt speaking. So a lot of people um, ask us um, some help. Uh, so the help we have done, yes, because um, there's so many um, like Coca-Cola and uh, we have, you know, Mary Lynch. We have so many banks and places that are becoming our members because they would like to expand the outreach in a different, more creative way. So people that work in those organizations, what they are asked is as individuals or because they were working uh, there or, or they lost the jobs or they would like to expand. We, we gave a percentage of commercial percentage of, of, of that individual that would like to support our expansion. Yes. That's Perfect. So that, that was the, the main questions. So thank you so much as well from the education point of view questions. Uh, thank you so much for the, the, my students that have as well sent, him, sent me some, some questions uh, or uh, that you lack some answers and so on. We leave that for another session. So I'm going to ask as well um, Marcus, please, to address the education uh, questions uh, that I can immediately, together with our experts and our front office, the so ones that are uh, not being answered, that we're going to run um, a session just for uh, educational questions uh, that is linked to programs, to, to registrations, to diplomas. I would like to address that as well. Uh, so please um, contact, uh, contact the front office or uh, contact Brussels at ispdnetwork.org as well. Um, so because front office, we receive so, so, so many um, questions. And if we did not have answered some of you, please, we apologize here publicly. If there's anyone not uh, being answered, uh, we will answer you very soon. And we take note for, for uh, your educational questions. So thank you so much as well for that. Um, and uh, as well, uh, the presence of uh, some of the people uh, I'm, I'm seeing here with, um, with care and as well a little bit of emotion because I'm seeing some of my, my favorite faces from the last years. Um, I'm looking to some, so, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. You are actually making me very happy today. It's, um, I, I needed maybe today a little bit of boost. So, so actually you are giving something to me. Um, and I'm, I'm thank you. So Marcus, uh, please register me as, in, as corporate member. 
individual because they are give me some boost now so i believe this has a value um so so thank you so much for 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 being present um and um, anything that uh, that we can join forces to accomplish uh, things together uh, we are here okay so thank you again uh, and uh, and we see you very soon thank you Ines. thank you so much Gracias. Gracias, Inés. Good morning, Inés, and thank you very much from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, thank you everyone. Until the, the next time. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios, adios, adios.